And so what would you say to people that don't have cancer but want to prevent it? Um, what would you say to them? How, how should they be implementing some of your message into their own life? In fact, the message is pretty much the same for everyone. I would tell people who don't have cancer to, um, to, be, to love yourself, be grateful for who you are, whoever, whatever you are, uh, and, um, and to find things that bring you joy and make you passionate about life. It's very, very important that you look for the gift in every day, in everything, and find joy in your life. Because um, healing um, your body is actually much more resilient, much more resilient when you are happy. But when things feel like a drudgery, when every day you're waking up and it's like, um, you know, like let's say if you have cancer and you spend each day waking up, it's, oh, I've still got cancer, I've got to deal with this. It's more of a drudgery. So you're already depleting your resources just being in that frame of mind. Yeah. You want your resources totally for the healing. You want your immune system to be, uh, to be strong. So for your immune system to be strong, you've got to be happy. Do what makes you happy. And so if you are healthy, that's fantastic. Don't deplete your health by doing things that feel like a real drudgery. I know life can sometimes throw you curveballs and life can, um, life can give you challenges. That's one of the consistence of life. It always does. But no matter what challenge you get, it's really important to look for the gift. First of all, when you're feeling, um, when you're feeling like suddenly that you're hit by that challenge and it's like the wind is being knocked out of your sails, allow yourself to feel that. Allow yourself the luxury to feel that because when you allow it, it actually passes. Mm. Uh, the people who end up wallowing in that and go into depression are the ones who are constantly judging themselves for it and say, oh, I shouldn't be feeling that, I shouldn't be feeling that. And we beat ourselves up and we become our own worst enemies and it gets worse and we go into a downward spiral. Yeah. But if you don't beat yourself up and you think, um, this is how I'm feeling right now, it's fine, I still love myself unconditionally, you're allowing it, you're still loving yourself unconditionally, you're honoring that feeling that you're going through and then you'll find it passes. And as soon as it passes and starts to sub, um, subside, the next stage is to start to look for the gift in that challenge. It's like, okay, so now what's the gift in it? Where is it going to take me that could be even more exciting than where I am now? And as soon as you start to find an exciting reason for this happening, you're really on your way to, to good health and healing and becoming stronger. Wow. And I'll bet if you ask anybody who has had cancer, I'll bet if you ask them, can you find a gift in it? Just about all of them will say, yes, I can. Yeah. Wouldn't, and they would say, I wouldn't change who I was before the cancer for who I am now. Yeah. That's and so I, true. Actually, yeah, I haven't met a single person who has said, I wish I didn't have it yet. I, I, and, and, you can bet I've met a lot of people with cancer because as I share my story, yeah. people come forward. Yeah. And when I say, can you find a gift in it? They all say, yes, I can. Mm. What's been the ma major gift for you? Obviously sharing your story and being able to help so many other people, but in your own personal life, what, what would be the number one gift? The number one gift was realizing that it's okay to be myself. It's yeah. totally okay. I was always trying to be what other people wanted me to be. I was always trying to meet other people's expectations. But my biggest gift was realizing I don't have to do that. I really don't. I came into this planet to be me and nobody else. Wow. Again, it's so simple. And it's just these things. That we could make our lives so much easier if we could just realize this. Yeah. We really can. And the thing is that in a sense, I feel that's the answer for everybody. Just be yourself. Yeah. Because if you just yourself, you will attract whatever is truly yours. You always will, as long as yourself. Um, when we're trying to warp ourselves and work at being different or what we think is better or meet other people's standards, we're sending really mixed messages out there because that's not who we truly are.
all we have to do is just be authentic, be your authentic self. Yeah, yeah. And so my, my view about cancer is that it's, it is really like your body's last ditch attempt to try and get you to live on your own true path and to love yourself and to stop judging yourself. So do you believe that as well, that it's kind of just like That's... a big kick up the bum to start living properly? It absolutely, absolutely yeah. 100%. Mm. I never felt, I mean, I used to feel that it was a punishment for something I'd done wrong or somehow I had created it with negative thoughts and things like that. I realize now it was none of those things. It was because I wasn't living authentically and, or, and life is actually simpler than I thought, a lot simpler. I was making it complicated, trying to work on myself, trying to be more spiritual, trying harder to be liked or more lovable and I realized in that NDE state you, we are all spiritual whether we realize it or not we don't have to work at it we just have to be authentic to who we are yeah. being true to yourself and being spiritual is one and the same thing mm. and so yeah it's a lot simpler than I thought and so the cancer to me was like it was like it was my own energy turned inwards, so it was a message to me, you know, like it was a kick up the backside, but it was my own en energy turned inwards against me, expressing itself as cancer, rather than expressing outwards to being the magnificent person I was meant to be. Wow. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what steps can could we, or what do you do on a day-to-day -day basis, if any, to 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 tell yourself that you love yourself and to keep living authentically. Is there anything that we can do, any tangible steps? Yeah, well, I have changed a lot of my inner dialogue and from that we can cre create some tangible steps that suit yeah. us. What I do is um, I allow people to create their own tangible steps because one of the things that I fear is that, well, fear is that when I was trying to heal my own cancer, I tried what everybody told me to try and whenever I didn't meet up or when it didn't work I felt I was doing something wrong mm. so this is why I don't like to say to people these these are the exact steps you have to do right. so what I like to tell you is this is what worked for me and let's see if we can create something um, around that that actually works for you we can tailor it to your needs that's kind of what I tell people yeah. because this kind of thing is not black and white. Uh, it's about finding your own authenticity in a way that works for you specifically. I think the things that are similar for all of us is that our purpose is to be authentic to our own self. That's something that we all share in common and that it can be very, very simple. The way we do it, the messages, the self-talk we tell ourselves, that can be a little bit different for each of us. So in my case, I was always putting myself down. I was always trying to please other people. I was always wondering whether I was good enough, um, whether I met other people's standards. And, then, and so the things that I would uh, do, my decisions were based on what made me look good, what made other people like me more. So today I ask myself different questions. It's like, am I doing this because I want other people to like me? Or am I doing this because it brings me joy? Wow. And so these are the kinds of things that we can ask ourselves is, does this bring me joy? And it's okay to do things for other people. I'm not saying not to, but why are you doing them? Am I doing it because I love this person or am I doing it because I want them to like me? Mm. And so these are the kinds of questions I ask myself now. And and I also still ask myself every day, like, is there anything I'm still afraid of? And I ask myself that um, if there is nothing I'm afraid of, what would I do right now? And wow. so I make sure that I'm not holding on to baggage and fears, try and be as clear and open as possible. Wow, that's good. And what about diet-wise? Do, um, do you still think that that's a big key to stopping the cancer from coming back or do you still hold that as a high top priority? I don't put it as a top priority but it is it does help. I think that 
um, it is a combination. I think it is really, really important for you to feel good emotionally, mentally, and um, uh, you know, spiritually. I think it's really important for you to have a very healthy self-esteem and a very healthy reason for living. I think that's really important. I feel that that's number one, even before the diet. And I think that when you choose the healthy foods, if it's coming from that space of, I want to live, I have a lot to live for, and I feel that these healthy foods will help, I think that that's much more effective than just focusing on diet, because many people are focusing only on the diet, but their approach to the diet is, an approach of fear. It's like, oh my God, if I eat the wrong foods, I'm going to get sick. I better eat this. I better eat these. And energetically, um, their bodies are still very much in fear. And they're, and what happens is that it really drains you. It drains you energetically. It drains your immune system. Just coming from this place of fear all the time. Yeah. I think it's really important to actually start to come more from a place of love and passion for life. And once you can get yourself into that state, even the diet side becomes much more effective. Mm. Yeah. And so how can we get our minds to get into this good space? Would you recommend things like meditation or affirmations or things like that? Yeah, I, I would recommend, um, like meditations can work. Yeah. There's a lot of things, and this is the good part, is that you just got to pick what feels good for you. So you can even sit down and make a list of all the things that you could possibly do. Now remember, you're not um, trying to do something because you think you should do it. You're going to do something because it makes you feel good. So there's no shoulds. You need to remove should from your vocabulary. So it's not, I should do this because it's going to make me better. So we've got to change perspective and say, it's not about the cancer anymore because I am not my cancer. It's about me, me, Jess. What am I going to do that makes me feel good? Well, you can write a list of a whole bunch of things like um, certain foods maybe make you feel good and you're eating them not just because for the purpose of your health, but because they make you feel good about yourself when you do it. Um, meditation might make you feel good. Yoga might make you feel good. Affirmations, certain affirmations might make you feel good. Um, and even self-talk, saying things like, um, I really love myself. I, I, I need to do this for myself. But I even tell people to begin with, if those things are hard, even if going shopping and buying yourself like a couple of pairs of shoes in different colors, if that makes you feel good, if that makes you feel loved, then just do that as a first step. Just do, do what makes you feel good and don't feel guilty after you do that because the kind of words you need to use is, I deserve it. I deserve this. It's about starting to feel like you deserve the good health and the healing and you deserve all the good things that life has to offer you. Yeah. So it's really about doing things that make you feel good. And then moving into things like meditation and then starting to look at your diet and all these things. But at all times coming from the place of feeling good about yourself. It's like, oh gosh, if I do this... I'm going to get my health back. That's going to be fantastic. I feel even better about this. What about people who have had cancer, have gone through cancer and might be in remission? What would you say to them? I would say don't think about being in remission. Live like a regular person. And this is, this is one of the problems is that from the minute we get diagnosed with cancer, that becomes the bigger thing that we're living for. And even when the cancer is gone, we start to become fearful that we're in remission. What I ask people is don't make your life about the cancer. So whether you have it or whether you're in remission, live like a regular person. Uh, in fact, live better than a regular person. Live like somebody who has passion for life, who has reverence for life. Live like a healthy person would live who loves their life. That's what I would say to anyone who has cancer, who has had cancer, live like a person who, ha who loves their life, a healthy person who loves their life would live. And those in remission, don't 
fear your cancer coming back. Live like you are just a normal, healthy person. Wow, that's going to help so many people. It's already helping me and it, I just can tell it's going to help so many people. <laughs> what would your number one message be out of everything that you've experienced, the near-death experience and everything since coming out of it? What's the one thing that you want the whole world to know? I would want the whole world to know that you are absolutely magnificent. We forget it sometimes, but that is the biggest lesson that I learned is that each one of us, we are absolutely magnificent. And how can you not be? You were created, you were born in perfection. How can you not be? We may have lost ourselves, lost our way along the way, along the journey of our lives, but you have nothing to be afraid of when it comes to being your authentic self. Be your authentic self, love your authentic self, and have a passion for your life. Do what makes you feel happy, joyful, passionate. And it's not selfish, because the more passionate you are about your life, the more you will be passionate about other people, the more generous you will be, the more you will love other people. When you don't love your life and yourself and your path, you'll actually be harder work for other people around you as well. So that's really the biggest message I have is like, be your authentic self yeah. and find your passion in life again. Life is definitely worth living. Yeah. And you've just proven that when you, when you get that, when that clicks, there's no need for cancer to be in your body. It just, yeah. Yeah. yeah, our yeah. bodies don't want yeah. to be sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's where each one of us want to be at a place where there's no need for cancer in our body and um, you know and, and sometimes it's not just cancer we we have all kinds of problems some of us are uh, some people are depressed some people their fears cause them to act out in violence it causes violent behaviors but we want to be at this place where we feel passionate about our lives that there's no need for us to even act out in violence. There's no need for us to be depressed. There's no need. If we were all passionate about our lives and loved our lives and realized how valuable it is for us to be here and how magnificent we are, if we realized our purpose, then we would have no reason for illness or, uh, or anything. And, um, and we would be much more loving as a species as well. Oh, well, I know that I'm definitely going to take some of your wisdom on board and I'm, I'm already really excited about it. it. It kind of feels like a big weight has been lifted off my shoulder after reading your book. And yeah, it's just made me look at, at where I am right now is, is perfect and I don't need to be anything else. I, my body doesn't need to be doing anything else. And yeah, it's all good. Mm. Absolutely. Where you yeah. are is absolutely perfect. Yeah. You really are. Mm. Yeah, so thank you so much. It's just been an absolute honor to talk to you. and I'm, I'm so excited to share this with everybody. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having me.